If you've caught the YouTube bug and you are creating a new channel, or maybe you came back to spruce up a channel that already exists, here's an easy to follow along tutorial on all the best methods of setting it up and also where all of these settings are on the platform because the YouTube platform has changed year over year. So here we go. So for those that don't know, I run a web design, photography, and SEO firm over here in North Jersey in New York City. And my social media, it's kind of dedicated to other things. So for instance, the Instagram where I have nearly 18,000 followers, it's all dedicated to dance. And my YouTube channel, which I'm approaching 20,000 subscribers on, it is dedicated to honestly, whatever I'm interested in the most, but it is an educational and tutorial channel. So to give you guys an overview back in in the day I used to cover a lot of 3d printing tutorials some of the videos they would pop off and I used to actually run a 3d printing benefit corporation I'm still involved where I design and print for hospitals some prototypes and I present in 3d printing it's still a passion of mine but my YouTube channel I kind of switched gears during the pandemic and I started making a bunch of loot off of stocks and crypto I have an MBA I've studied finance and so I really got into it and it helped the channel grow and then I even had one that surpassed 800,000 views it was a nice payday as of late though I took a really deep dive into artificial intelligence and I leveraged all the contacts I have and the clients I have and I started consulting a lot of the businesses in AI I started to do talks on AI I've presented in a lot of places and my YouTube channel as of late is all about AI tutorials and I don't plan to stop that anytime soon even though you'll see that the revenue is not as much as those stocks and finance videos or even some of the more technical tutorials and IT tutorials that I used to do but I absolutely love AI I think the generative AI trend it's here to stay it's not a phase and so I'm gonna keep dedicating the channel to it and one thing I want to show is that you can switch topics and still have successful videos there's a bunch of videos I have with 20 30 40 thousand views that have to do with AI and what I want to cover in this video is the settings on your YouTube channel that will help you if you're just running a channel that's geared to a specific topic and you want to keep it that way or if you're actually going to switch topics like I did here are some helpful settings that are going to assist with that and I'll actually probably cover all the settings here so that if you're new to having a YouTube channel you can understand it fully so the first thing you're going to want to do is navigate to studio.youtube.com and then over here, if you scroll down, you're going to see customization. You can then select this basic info section right here. And here is where you can input your description. This is going to be really, really helpful to tell Google and YouTube exactly what to showcase you for. So you're going to want to infuse it with some of those keywords. And there's actually a section that you can actually include specific keywords for what you want to rank for. So let me show you that now. Where you can find that is if you click on settings right here. So we'll actually probably go through all of these settings and I'll point out which ones are really important as far as ranking or if you're changing the topic of your channel, which ones to tweak. So first things first, default units for the currency if you're a monetized channel. This is just selecting the currency that you want displayed in your YouTube Studio account. If you select channel, the country of residence, that's obvious. And over here is a really important part. These are the keywords. So since I'm doing a lot less of 3D printing and even stocks and crypto, I left those towards the end and I wanna include a lot of keywords that deal with artificial intelligence, AI, generative AI, AI news, and then computer tutorials, educational content, stocks and crypto tech tutorials towards the end. I would definitely place the keywords with most importance to you in the beginning rather than at the end. And then if you select the advanced settings option under channel, you can see here that they ask if your channel is made for kids. Now I have found that the channels that select, yes, set this channel is made for kids. You're really going to take a hit with your views. Unless you're really putting out content that's just meant for kids, then I would highly recommend that you select, no, set this channel is not made for kids. I never upload content that's made for kids. 
If you look at feature eligibility, you'll actually see, especially if your channel's new, if you qualify for the standard features, intermediate features, as well as advanced features, and you could read more about it by hitting the drop downs here. For the upload defaults, this is basically when you upload a new video, you can have a bit of a shortcut where you specify exactly how you want things to appear. So for instance, if you're just doing a hundred tutorials on how to code in Python language, your description is going to be similar across the board. And so what you might want to do is just have a template here. So that way it loads up every time that you upload a video, the description will already be there and you can just modify as you see fit. Because my titles are always different, I leave that blank and here, all I did is I linked to some of my social medias and I wrote some of the stuff that I include in every single one of my videos and I started the whole hashtag thing. Remember, hashtags go in the description of your video, not in the tag section. And again, these, the tags, visibility, this is all stuff that you want to populate if you have the same type of video that you're going to produce and it'll already have these keywords in here. So I could set this to public and I could put artificial intelligence tutorial, artificial intelligence, AI, generative AI, all that stuff. Permissions. This is where if you have a large channel and you have assistance from others, this is where you can manage those permissions. It used to be on the brand account, but now you can move all of your permissions to YouTube studio. And what's great is you get more roles to choose from, including manager, editor, editor, limited viewer, viewer, limited. The people, you know, that run a really big channel of their multiple people that post to the channel or work on the channel, they all have permissions on it. Obviously, if you're working with someone, overseas, you're going to want to give them less permissions than if it's your brother or sister or a teammate you trust just because they can go ahead and wreak havoc on your channel or even delete it. So if you go to community, this is something that's actually really helpful that a lot of people don't know about. So the first thing is you can have moderators and you can add certain managing moderators, standard moderators, approved users. These are people that are going to go ahead and be able to remove certain comments or review certain things, make sure that it's exactly as you want it to appear. If it's a professional channel, you might want to have someone monitor comments and delete them if it's spam and all that stuff hidden users is amazing sometimes you get spammed by bots and a lot of times if it's the same bots i just throw them under hidden users also you'll get trolls like my youtube is not that popular but there's people that visit it just to troll in the comment section so i just drop them down here and then it's invisible they see it but nobody else sees it which is perfect the other really helpful thing is blocked words so any future comment that contains any of these words they simply get blocked in my comment section. Because I used to make videos on crypto, I have so many scam artists that visit a lot of my YouTube videos and they try to shill for their shit coins and they try to put all these things like, you know, contact us on Telegram or WhatsApp or invest in Post Chain and all this stuff. So I just throw these block words here and it doesn't matter how many bots they send to my YouTube channel to go ahead and leave some ridiculous comments trying to garner attention for their coin that they they're shilling, it's going to go ahead and it's just not going to show it. It's going to block it. The other thing that I toggled on here is to block links. There was a lot of things where people are commenting in the comment section with links and I don't want that because I don't want someone to scam someone watching my channel that's going to click on a malicious link and drag them away from the page. This obviously doesn't apply to you. So if you want to post a comment on your actual video that includes a helpful link or a link to anything, even something you're promoting, you can go ahead and do it. So can your moderators and so can your approved users. And remember those moderators and users, you can specify them right here. The defaults is obvious. This is if you, for some reason, don't want comments on your channel, you can go ahead and remove it. I highly recommend that you leave this on because the more comments, the more engagement on your videos, this is going to help your ranking for sure. And in this section, if you're engaged in live chats or you want to have certain guidelines for comments, you can write it here. The creator demographics, this is just a survey that helps YouTube gather more information and understand your channel better. Uh, it says here that it's going to have no impact impact on your content or channel's performance in the YouTube systems. So if you want, you can take this survey to help YouTube out, I suppose. 
and the agreement section this is just when you can read through a lot of the rules and regulations that youtube has in place some of this stuff is really interesting again i'm not going to cover it in this video because i don't want it to be snooze time some of these are quite long but it's a really really helpful read and you'll understand all of the guidelines and terms that you've agreed to on your channel. I really appreciate you guys for watching this video in its entirety. For me personally, YouTube has been a godsend. It has allowed me to sharpen my skill set when it comes to articulating, when it comes to editing. It's also been helpful to pad the bank account here and there, especially when certain videos go viral and get a lot of views and ad revenue. And it has also been a very interesting journey business-wise because I have gotten a lot of leads and I've gotten a lot of business opportunities that I would not have gotten if I didn't dedicate myself to YouTube. And believe me you, when I started the YouTube channel a few years back, I thought that I was just dumping time into something that wasn't gonna pay off, but in my case it did. It doesn't mean that it's gonna work out for everyone, but YouTube is something that I have learned a lot from. When I was sharpening my skill sets when it comes to photography, videography, or web design, or trying to learn how to program, I was using YouTube tutorials. I've been doing that for nearly a decade. And so my way of giving back was creating tutorials as well. And so hopefully with continued support and subscribers and likes and comments, my motivation stays high for continuing to make this type of content. I will say it is not the easiest journey. There's a lot of time, effort, dedication that you're gonna have to put in. There's gonna be a lot of flops. Again, I wanna reiterate that speaking of flops, I've changed the theme of my channel a few times. And that's not the most recommended way of doing things where I started as 3D printing and then I kinda dove into analytics and finance and even stocks and crypto. And now for the past year or so, I've been doing AI and I think I'm gonna continue to do that for many years to come. I'm neck deep in artificial intelligence, but I have been able to see continued growth in my channel. And I think a part of that was because I adjusted these settings when I went ahead and changed the topic of my channel. But even if you don't change the topic, even if your channel's the same from the start, which is the preferred way, everybody says that's an expert in this space, they say that you should start very specific and stay specific and don't go off course like I did. But even if that's you, go back to these settings take a look at the keywords take a look at the descriptions and make sure that it still very much applies to what you do and if it doesn't tweak that and you might see some really great results when it comes to the traffic that you generate on your YouTube channel and hopefully the amount of money and ad revenue that you see coming in so I hope you guys appreciated this tutorial and I hope you stick around because there'll be plenty more tutorials dropping from promo ambitions in the near future.